Hello, welcome to another episode of Here PEI Videos. Today we have a special treat for you. Dr. Heidi Eaton is a great educator on topics related to tinnitus, or tinnitus, depending on how you want to say it. She's going to talk to us about tinnitus, give us some tips, tell us what it is, and explain some of the old wives' tales that you may find that's dedicated to trying to liberate you from your pocketbook, but they don't actually work. We're going to be discussing a number of highlights relating to tinnitus, and I hope you find it very interesting. Tinnitus or tinnitus comes from the word tinier, which means to ring. So most people that experience tinnitus experience it as a ringing sound. Most commonly people would tell me that it sounds like a, an overhead electric line that they're hearing in their, um, in their ears. Their ear level, maybe one ear, maybe the other ear, or maybe in the center of their head. It doesn't just have to be a ringing sound though. Other people experience it as a sound like bacon frying. It can sound like a, a whooshing sound. It can sound like a seashell or the ocean. True tinnitus, nobody else can hear it. It's a phantom perception. My poor husband has many times been woken up in the nighttime by me telling him that I could hear water running. We go and we check, but there is no water running. And as he pointed out, how would I hear water running from the bedroom? We've had to adjust the tone of our doorbell and we've had to adjust the ringtone on our phone so that the actual sounds don't match the sounds that sometimes come out of my ears. We can't measure tinnitus, so it's not like we can put a probe in your ear. The most common reason by far that people experience tinnitus is due to auditory damage. There can be other hearing problems that result in tinnitus as well. For example, you could have a block of wax or you could have an ear infection. Anything that impedes the sound getting through the auditory system to the auditory center in the brain can result in the perception of tinnitus. But there are other factors. There could be a head and neck injury. There could be certain medications. It could be certain disease processes like diabetes causes vascular issues and if there's restriction of vascularization it can result in tinnitus as well. Tinnitus is a symptom of something else that's going on, not its own individual disease process. We keep getting in emails that come to us is, I've been told I have tinnitus but I know I don't have hearing loss. Should someone go to an audiologist to double check? So just because somebody doesn't necessarily have a hearing loss doesn't mean that they don't have auditory damage. What happens in our hearing organ is that we hear with hearing cells and we're born with the hearing cells that we have for life. And when they're gone, they're gone. They don't regrow, they don't regenerate. But due to a lot of redundancy in the auditory system, this allows for the erosion of up to 30% of the hearing cells without somebody having a hearing loss on paper and doesn't mean, therefore, that they wouldn't have tinnitus as a symptom of that auditory damage. So number one reason that people experience tinnitus is due to hearing loss, but the number two reason people experience tinnitus is due to ototoxic medications. There are a number of medications that we know have a side effect of tinnitus, for example, the myosin family, um, antibiotics, so genomyosin, canamyosin, neomyosin, also uh, cisplatinum, um, medications given for cancer therapy. So we know there are certain medications that have the side effect of tinnitus, but sometimes it's even the combination of medications that an individual is taking. And so in those cases, it's really good to have um, a conversation with your pharmacist and take a good look at what's going on if the person is experiencing problematic tinnitus. If you notice any uh, tinnitus or hearing loss occurring and you're on prescription medications, it makes sense to ask your pharmacist if any of the medications you take might be contributing. Uh, we know that certain uh, medications are more likely to cause hearing loss or tinnitus. There are some uh, IV antibiotics and also some chemotherapy drugs that definitely cause significant hearing loss. Uh, those may be unavoidable, but there are other medications that you could get at your community pharmacy uh, that may have other options, uh, such as powerful uh, fluid pills uh, or high-dose aspirin. Those are two uh, 
uh, common culprits of tinnitus or hearing loss. Certainly, if you're being prescribed any of those, have a discussion with your pharmacist, especially if you already have hearing issues. Um, people with kidney damage or limited kidney function are also more at risk of hearing loss. So certainly, if you're on aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which fall into the same category as aspirin, or certain fluid medication, it makes sense to talk to your pharmacist about the impact on your hearing. When it comes to tinnitus, though, and the experience for people with hearing loss, some people experience it, some people don't. I have a moderate to severe hearing loss, and I wear two hearing aids. I am very fortunate to not have to experience tinnitus. Tinnitus. It's not a pleasant experience, but over the years I've learned to live with it. I can tell you that it's worse than the hearing loss itself. People that experience it, some people experience it as a sound that they're aware of, and other people experience it as problematic. And that's really where audiologists come in to, to help the patients that experience tinnitus as problematic. But audiologists are one piece of the puzzle. When it comes to uh, tinnitus treatment, for example, in the UK, the treatment is um, headed by psychology, and audiologists are one of the um, disciplines that are, are incorporated in treating tinnitus. In Canada, it tends to be audiologists that um, coordinate the therapy for a patient and can then refer a patient to an ear, nose, and throat doctor if they need to, to a psychologist if they need to, to dietitians, or wherever we deem um, the person could be most helped. If a person is experiencing tinnitus and they come in for a hearing evaluation and a tinnitus evaluation, we present tones to the individual and say, does that sound anything like your tinnitus in terms of the volume and also the tone that I'm presenting, the frequency, and, and then we try and match it that way. We also do testing to assess if the person is sensitive to loud sounds, hyperacusis, which um, can go along with the hearing loss and tinnitus, and as well as a self-report. So we get an idea of how problematic the tinnitus is for the individual, and then we can look at the whole case and uh, make some determinations from there. Many times patients will say that they've gone to their family doctor and been told, well, there's nothing you can do, just go home and live with it. But that's certainly not the case, that you don't have to just go home and live with tinnitus. Um, the way that we treat tinnitus is with counseling. One, so that you know why it's there, that it's not a big bad disease of its own, that it's not there to hurt you. And when an audiologist tests um, you and does a tinnitus evaluation, they look for red flags. If there was something medically going on, you know, we would certainly want to refer a patient out. But if it's typical hearing loss that's resulting in the tinnitus, then the way we want to treat it is with sound therapy and with counseling. Number one thing is avoid silence, because in a silent room, the tinnitus is going to appear to be louder, it's going to appear to be brighter. So I always liken it to the birthday cake example. If I were to bring you in a birthday cake and I light all the candles, then I go, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to turn off the lights. Well, if I turn off the lights, the candles appear to be brighter. The candles haven't changed their brightness at all. The only thing that's changed is the background, whether the lights are on or the lights are off. And it's the same with tinnitus. If it's like a dark room, a quiet room, the tinnitus is going to appear to be much brighter. Um, and if there's some stimulation in the room, so some music that you enjoy, a fan, a sound machine, so that you don't perceive the tinnitus as being as loud and, and invasive, and there's not one sound that's better than the other, what's most important is that whatever you're listening to is not something that bothers you. Generally what happens if people, for example, have a hearing loss and they have uh, tinnitus, then we will be recommending hearing aids to treat the hearing loss. And what happens with that is that when the auditory system doesn't have to work as hard to send the messages through to our biggest hearing organ, which is the auditory center in the brain, then it quiets down the neuronal firing. The auditory system doesn't have to go into overdrive and, and work so hard. Um, so just by wearing hearing aids and bringing in sounds naturally from the environment that helped amass tinnitus, but also um, correcting the hearing loss that you have reduces the tinnitus. But sometimes people need a little extra help. And in those cases, we can add a second program into hearing aids that are a tinnitus masking program. And then from there, you have a variety of choices on what that masking noise 
can be. It can be a white noise, it can be a pink noise, it can be a red noise. Red noise has been providing the most benefit when it comes to masking tinnitus and so it's more of a low frequency based um, um, sound. We can download um, sounds that the person, nature sounds that the person chooses for themselves. So there's a lot of flexibility, but the bottom line is that it is just masking sound that is at ear level. You don't have to walk around and turn on a fan or turn on music. It's at ear level. You're the only one that's listening to it. For me, the story began in October 1997. All of a sudden, it felt as though I had a big whooshing sound in my ears. Sort of like when you're on a plane and the pressure builds too much. You do whatever you can to try and relieve the pressure by trying to pop your ears. In my case, it only made it worse. All I could hear were huge sounds. Everything sounded like an echo. Even the sound of my own voice sounded like an echo. I went for a test at the doctor's, thinking that I had an ear affection. He sent me to an audiologist. The audiologist just sent me back to the doctor where it was recommended that I had an MRI. And the next thing I knew was that my hearing loss and my tinnitus, which I had never heard of until then, was due to a benign brain tumor. So I lost the hearing in my ear and I have a wonderful accompaniment of wishes, sounds, bells and whistles. That's my experience. There's been nothing proven um, to cure tinnitus. There are people out there selling anything from, you know, the root of, of um, you know, something that can only be harvested in Africa or um, a certain mattress that you can use or a copper bracelet. These products have offered nothing more than a placebo effect, which can be negative in that the person gets their hopes up. You know, they have that sort of a placebo effect at first they feel oh yeah I think this is doing something and then the tinnitus is right back and then they're more disappointed because they've tried and and it's still not gone if the tinnitus and it's not even a true tinnitus it's called a somato sound but if it sounds like your pulse if it's like a whoosh 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 well then that is your pulse and so if there's something vascularly going on then you know taking something like ginkgo or something that's going to help with your blood flow helps with the pulse and then helps with what you're hearing in your ear. But your pulse and that sound is not true tinnitus. And when it comes to tinnitus, then the ginkgo is not going to do anything. You know, when you're online, um, be careful and talk to your audiologist, talk to your specialist. In terms of the aggravation of tinnitus symptoms themselves, there are uh, a number of factors. They can be um, health related, they can be diet related, they can be lifestyle related. You know, caffeine or, or salt intake or increased stress at a certain time. Um, sometimes even weather patterns can, can create the tinnitus. So we certainly recommend that people um, watch their diet, staying fit, exercising, keeping the blood flow going, making sure you live a healthy lifestyle is going to help in a lot of ways, but eliminating those factors doesn't mean that a person won't have tinnitus if they have the auditory damage. In 28 years, I may have seen two or three people that have tinnitus that's more than five to 10 decibels in volume. Um, so it's a very discreet sound, but the issue becomes how the person is reacting to the tinnitus. What we do know is that the two predictive factors in problematic tinnitus, it's not the volume of the tinnitus, it's the reaction to the tinnitus, and that is greatly affected by a person's stress or anxiety level, and it's also affected by whether they're um, getting enough sleep, if they're sleeping well. Some people are so uptight inside because of the tinnitus, they're so distressed by the tinnitus that the, their body's just in, the, in a state of a reaction to the tinnitus. One idea is to take a ball and grip it as tightly as you can and hold it and hold it and hold it for like 30 seconds and then let it go. So just that feeling of releasing, to know what it feels like just to let go, to, to let go of the stress. There's also tinnitus retraining therapy. It involves therapy, counseling, and also 
sound therapy and whether your sound therapy comes in the form of hearing aids or or if you have no hearing loss it comes in the form of utilizing sound around you those are still the main methods for tinnitus well that was a whirlwind uh, education on tinnitus wasn't it so let's recap some of the key points that dr heidi has illustrated to tinnitus is a symptom it's not a condition if you do suffer from tinnitus you want to find out what the underlying condition is. How bad tinnitus affects you depends on your perception of it. There are various techniques to help you offset the perception that you have on how difficult tinnitus is. And that ranges from psychological therapy, from sound therapy, white noise, a number of different things. Some drugs and food will affect how intense the tinnitus symptoms are, as does weather and stress. If you take any kind of medication, double check with your pharmacist to make sure it will not aggravate any tinnitus symptoms. Pay close attention to some of the old wives' tales that uh, Dr. Heidi has pointed out that don't actually work. There's no point in upsetting yourself or wasting your money on things that don't work. Concentrate on things that do work. We hope you've enjoyed this video and look forward to hearing from you if you have tinnitus. Send us an email at hearpei at gmail.com to share your experiences. See you next time. Bye-bye.